Hi, folks. Uh, I enjoy reading all the comments you folks have put on my YouTube uh, channel. And uh, one of the ones I got today for was from a gentleman named Gus B. And he was asking about waveform analysis. Um, I've been focusing on how to get waveforms on the oscilloscope. And in some of the videos, I show um, what we're doing and what the waveform is guiding us to do. But I thought I was going to make a little different video today. So I'm just making this intro and I'm going to go into the computer and do some voiceovers to show you some screenshots of different waveforms I've got and the repairs that those waveforms led me to. So let's go in the house. Let's show what we got. Okay, so the first thing we're going to take a look at here is my HP 5087A distribution amplifier. This little guy takes the GPS signal from my GPS disciplined oscillator and it puts it out uh, through about 12 outputs on the back. And that goes to all my time-based test equipment. It keeps everything locked to 10 megahertz so I have unparalleled accuracy and I don't have to worry about it. Uh, but when I first got this thing and hooked it up, I noticed that the outputs all had some kind of fur on them. And since all the outputs were messed up, that takes us to the power supply. Now, normal, regular power supplies consist of um, rectification and filtering. So you get DC, but it has a certain amount of ripple on it. And for most applications, that's fine. But when we get into the test equipment world, that's just not good enough. And so too here, they add another stage of regulation. And... You need to know that because when I show you this waveform, I'll explain to you what's happening. So the waveform that you see here is after the regulator. You can see it has a flat top, but then it has these dips between the flat tops. And I had seen this before, so I knew what was happening is that we had bad filtering before the regulator. The flat top is the regulator actually working but when the voltage falls below the point in which the regulator needs a uh, minimum to regulate, you see that dip. And that usually means bad filtering. And it, that was exactly the case here. If you look at this waveform here, this is before the regulator. And it shows that we have poor to non-existent filtering after the diodes. When I checked the filter capacitor shown on the schematic here, it was virtually just an open. And replacing it gave us a waveform before the regulator that looked much more acceptable like this. And then after the regulator, I got what we should have had in the first place, which is essentially a straight line or DC out with no ripple component. So the first waveform, and I'll put it back up here so you can see it, shows that the regulator is working, but when the ripple fell below the point in which the regulator had enough voltage to work, it just simply could not. Okay, so the next waveform I want to show came from a Yamaha M70 stereo power amplifier I bought. The seller told me that it worked, but the left channel was distorted. And when I put the unit on my bench and put a clean sine wave into both channels, the right channel looked good, but as you can see, the left channel is clipped only at the top. Now, when you listen to this, you really don't know what's going on, but the oscilloscope clearly shows where the problem is. Now, let's take a look at the schematic here. This is a full complementary amplifier, which means it has from the beginning of the output stage to the end, NPN transistors to amplify the positive going half of the waveform, and P and P transistors which amplify the negative going half of the waveform. And if you look at the heavy black line that goes through the schematic, that shows you the signal path. So Using the oscilloscope, I traced through and right after the first transistor, my signal looked bad. So at that point, I pulled my DMM out and checked the transistor and I didn't have a good, I didn't have good voltages at the emitter and base. You can see that the emitter is 
two volts and the base is 0.8. I had my 0.8, but I didn't have my 0.2. The emitter base junction was open. So I replaced TR101 and I got good signal at the emitter. My DC voltages look good, but my output was still bad. So I traced the black line and the next transistor we see is TR127. And again, I had the same problem. I had good voltage at the base, but not good voltage at the emitter. And when I checked the uh, transistor, it was also bad. Replacing these two transistors restored normal operation to the amplifier. I can only surmise that the amplifier took a transient high positive going signal on the left channel somehow. Maybe somebody uh, plugged the... Uh, plug the jack in the back in the left channel anyhow it blew out those two transistors and nothing else and so i ran the amplifier for a while and the the repair was good those were the only two transistors that were bad but the waveform clearly showed us where we needed to go we didn't even have to look at the bottom half of this amplifier on the schematic we could see that the problem was going to manifest itself only in the npn transistors and signal tracing from the beginning through the amplifier yielded results fairly quickly. So that's where I'm going to stop this video right now. Um, I just wanted to go into a little of waveform analysis on how it points you to where you can find your problems. And as always, thank you for watching and I enjoy giving back to the community that has given me so much. Thanks a lot and have a great day.